What if I told you a 6-year-old chimpanzee became the 22nd most successful money manager in the US, beating over 10,000 mutual funds with over 365% returns? Better stay tuned, my pups of Wall Street, because I'm not referring to anyone on Wall Street bets, but an actual chimp beating the best of the industry. And at the end, we will dissect all the secrets that made her so successful. But before that, have you ever wanted to learn more about finances but thought it was too darn boring? Then consider subscribing. You'll be watching your YouTube feed and be like, oh, a monkey trader, that sounds fun. And without even noticing, holy crap, John, what happened to me? I think I learned something. Holy shit, here, watch the Kardashians before it's too late. So, it all started in 1999. Kids were killing each other for Pokemon cards and everyone and their mother thought Y2K was gonna make their toaster go full Terminator. But it is in this colorful time that a 6-year-old chimpanzee named Raven threw 10 darts at a dartboard of 133 related companies. Now, you could hardly think of a more stupid way to make money than giving a primate a bunch of darts. But the guys who were there were like, yeah, so this monkey? Totally gonna beat the market. We already made a website, a market index, some t-shirts, standard and poor's. Pfft, more like standard for poor's, am I right? And right he was, as the stocks Raven picked greatly outperformed the market with a 365% yearly return, making Raven the Chimp into Raven the Champ. Her monkey index index, that's a real thing by the way, I can't even make this shit up, beat the best of the best of all mutual funds run by America's top managers. You may think this is a joke, but far from it, there's a huge lesson for all investors in this victory for the animal kingdom. The market was about to close for the last time on the millennia and this chimp is ahead by a mile. At this point, it is practically impossible for any American fund manager to pull a trick out of his or her ass and perform a miracle that will beat this ape as the most successful money manager of 1999. We will later see how Raven stocks ended up, but now, Let's see how popular this monkey trader thing was. So a similar thing was replicated on an experiment conducted by British researchers where they put a group of monkeys against the market. Computer monkeys to skip the banana feeding and shit thrown apart. They figured out that the monkeys did significantly better than the market when picking stocks at random from an index of 1000 of the biggest US companies between 1968 and 2011. Here we can see how consistent the monkeys were at picking stocks outperforming the market by a whopping 60% of the time in a period of 39 years. In this experiment, the market cap index turned $100 into nearly $5,000, while over half of the monkeys transformed those 100 into 8,700, 25% of them made them into 9,100, and the top performing monkeys transformed those measly $100 into $9,500 almost twice as much as that pesky market. Finally, we have Graham Stephan that recently spent $100,000 on 10 stocks literally picked by a monkey, before being pre-selected from a list of 30, those being pre-selected from a list of 1,000 of the largest stocks by capitalization. Now, there's no way to know exactly how this will turn out, but I'm willing to bet one shiny shekel that it will put most investment funds to shame. So is this a secret to getting stupid rich? Did Raven enter her days as a strong independent chimp with all the bananas and piles of money she could ask for? Sadly, this wasn't the case. Unfortunately for Raven, her success and eventual bankruptcy were simply a consequence of the time with an investment career that ended abruptly with the dot-com crash. In the mid-2000s, only 20 months after the dartboard experiment, the monkey dex was down 34%, during which the Nasdaq was up 3.37%. From there, things only got worse, and not only just for our chimp. Overall, the Nasdaq crashed nearly 70% between 2000 and 2002, representing trillions of dollars lost and the bursting of one of history's most spectacular stock market bubbles. Every single stock picked by Raven is now worth nothing. Turns out, tech stocks were simply so popular back then that short-term gains were as easy as trading a chimp to throw darts. But there's something to be learned from the success it did have, as even if almost all her investments crashed and burned, also did most of other hedge fund managers' investments. 
without having nearly as much success as Raven did. So let's get serious and understand how and why this chimpanzee system can work for anyone, but only if you're willing to deal with a little catch. If you understand this, you'll be able to refine your strategy and make more money than those fancy ass hedge funds. Number 1. Active Management versus Indexing Research studies generally indicate that actively managed portfolios fail to outperform the index portfolios over the long run. In other words, active stock picking and trading may be making you poorer, which may explain why over 75% of all funds fail to beat their own indexes. That's like your child making more money than you before he could even speak. Dot, you suck ass. Think about it. These educated experts can't beat the market. What makes you believe you will be the next Warren Buffett with your two Amazon stocks in your Robinhood account? Index funds also have several advantages over managed portfolios, like lower fees and lower taxes. Plus, they take away all the emotional aspects of trading like selling too soon or buying too high. When you buy and sell while being emotional, even a primate can beat you. Number 2. Care about the target, not the one who throws the dart. Do not let anyone tell you they can get you better returns if you give them your funds for them to invest. That is only a waste of money and most likely they will be more interested on getting their pockets loaded with fees than in actually growing your portfolio. We already saw that a chimp and a group of monkeys can obliterate every hedge fund's returns, so you should pay no more than a basket of bananas for their services. Number 3. Choose already proven companies. Look, let's be real. There's a bigger chance for me to go to space than for you to pick the next Google or Amazon or whatever. More so given that my target demographic is people who are just getting into finances. So do me a favor and if you were to pick stocks, go for the bigger ones. There's a reason why Raven did well. She picked from the largest companies at the time. Remember the monkey experiment and Graham's 100k investments? They also chose from an already good selection of companies. And yes, you could hit a home run and find the next Tesla, but most likely you won't and might lose it all while trying. The little catch with Raven's strategy is that if you were to pick at random, you'd have a higher probability of picking some smaller, riskier stocks. And in finances, more risk equals more potential returns. If you know nothing about investments, I'd recommend buying an ETF or buying the biggest companies. Woohoo, another video done. So I wanted to experiment a little more with some lessons mixed in with some funny stories. Also trying some new styles of animation, which by the way are now stunning thanks to my illustration artist. So yeah, all credits on graphics go to him. What? You thought I did those drawings? Oh, oh no, 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 no. Most I can do is just a stick figure. Why do you think the first videos were all crappy like that? I'm not a graphic designer. I'm just a humble financial controller, which by the way sounds way cooler than it actually is. But anyways, let me know what you think of this video and this kind of animation and what kind of topics you want me to talk about next. So I think that's about it. Until next time, bye.